everybody, it's Aquila, and this is the Lefty Knitter Podcast, episode 122? I should have looked that up, but I think it's 122. Ah, uh, yes. I live in Baltimore, Maryland, with three cats, a husband, a daughter. The other daughter doesn't live here anymore, but she's still here. You know. All the things. You can find me down below, all the links, Instagram, Ravelry, etc., yada yada. And I am cracking up laughing every day because of these posts that you're making on the last video. If you're not aware, we're having a giveaway. So watch the last episode to find out how to enter. Because that is why a certain word is showing up in all the comments. Crazy. Okay. <laughs> I have been working on orders for the Etsy shop and it's just been busy. And I've been trying to really boost my social media. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen maybe way too many reels and maybe too many IG videos. And I also, before this episode, if it's an order, you would have seen that I posted a video on one of, like a cranking video on my Earl Backer Gear Heart. So I know everybody's not gonna be interested in that and I understand and, but stick with me for these videos because even if you, you know, don't wanna watch those, I'm okay with it. So not that there's, there's already a ton of people who put not, that's like such an exaggeration. There's a ton. There are quite a few people who put out videos about the Erlbacher or circular sock machines in general, because that's not the only one that's out there. There's Laguerre's and auto knitters, etc. But I feel like, is it hurting anything that I'm putting an extra video out there? I don't think so. Just like I've talked about doing tutorials because I'm left-handed so that's like you can find videos for left-handed knitters and crocheters but not everybody's videos speak to the the audience the listener in the same way and so I feel like if my video helps a few people it's not really hurting anything right so I don't know. All right. <laughs> but on to the show. I really don't have a whole lot to show you guys because I've only made very little progress since the last time I videoed. I didn't mention today is June 29th and it's Tuesday. Bada bing bada boom. It's Tuesday. So I haven't made a lot of progress because when I showed you the stuff I s on Saturday, I've been doing so many other things. It's just, I haven't had a whole lot of time. So even though my videos might end up being short sometimes, because I don't have a whole lot of content, I feel like I need to keep myself regimented and video still and post on Saturday. Because if not, I'll just stop doing it. And then I'll be like, oh, I don't need to do it. And then I won't do it again. I have to keep myself on a schedule. You have to keep yourself on a schedule. Do you guys have to like make a calendar? Like we have a calendar. That doesn't keep me on schedule for this though. This is all just you have to do it type of thing. Like I'm not going to put on the calendar. You need to record at 12 o'clock today because I might not have anything to show at 12 o'clock. I might have something to show at 3 o'clock. But I don't have anything to show today at noon. It's crazy. I may have mentioned... I lost my crochet hook, the one that I was using for my blanket, and it's part of a set, and I was really upset that I lost it. I'm going to crinkle a minute. So I went and bought the size that I lost in the same one so I can put it back in my set. It is the tulip hook. This is the one I'm making for my blanket. And I lost it. It's, it's the one I used to crochet my pot plant holder. And I found the yarn I used 
but not the hook. So I have no clue what I did with it. I, I searched the couches, couldn't find it. I, I don't know, I was very upset with myself. I don't lose things like very often and getting a huge glare. I don't lose things very often. So when I do, it really tears at me. Like I will flip things upside down to try to find it. It's, it, it really bothers me because I am not that person. I've never been that person. I know where things are. Are you one of those people that loses things? Do you need to have your keys with those, what are they called, tiles? And you can like set an app on your phone so you can find your keys. <laughs> I'm not that person. There are those people, that, that's not me. But I'll just show you the tiniest progress I've made on the sock that I'm working on. I have now finished all my orders except for one thing I'm waiting on to come in. So I'm really, really excited to get on the machine and like crank some stuff for myself or attempt to crank fully finished socks for the non-knitters in the world that want to buy finished socks. Not that they can't buy finished socks from other Etsy people because you can. Um but I want to put some out there because I think it would be really fun putting together some color combinations. I have been stocking up on yarn when it's on sale just so I can crank socks to sell on Etsy. Because I have friends on Facebook that are always like, oh, do you sell socks? Because they don't knit. And I'm like, no. Because I post on there all the time stuff. Well, guess what? I'm gonna try to do that. All right, I was only right here the last time I showed you. So I've only made about 15 rows of progress maybe. I am at, these count my rows. So if you're new, I'm sorry, I should explain. I use a, a Chaigu nine inch circular, US one. This is 64 stitches. This is pretty twisted yarns. Teresa, she's a self-striping dyer down in Florida. Oh, my yarn smells so good because I have, I was using a hand balm. <laughs> and I mark my rows every 10 rows and I do about 170. That's for me. I, I, I could do more or less, honestly. Have you guys seen Andy's podcast, her newest one? She announced that she got her circular sock machine. I already knew she was getting one, so. I feel a little privy to the knowledge, but holy moly, she's making all the socks. And just like I felt, I was like, my sock drawer is getting very full, very fast. She said the same thing and I just laughed because I was like, and then the other comment she made was something like, um, when her machine came, everything else was put on hold and I totally did the same thing too. But she did some really fun rolled cuff Shorty socks, I wanna do those. And I have the book um, for the Selvage Edge to know how to do that. So Andy, I'm copying you. I'm gonna do that too. Cause I really wanna make some. She did on, on the arm warmers too. Really cool. Andy the Nitrous, if you don't know who I'm talking about, I apologize. I'll have her linked down below. So I am at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 130 rows plus whatever's above there. So I'm not far from starting my toe decrease and then I'll do a cut in heel. This is not a specific pattern. I am just slipping stitches. When the color change happens, I'm slipping stitches and I'm staggering that. So yeah, they're not stacked, they're staggered. I like staggered stuff for some reason, I don't know. Wow, I didn't think I'd have anything to talk about, and I'm nine minutes in. I am having a very rough two days. I don't know if I got water in my ear. I've had some nasty, nasty dizziness. And I had been diagnosed with having vertigo years and years ago. And I, not, I have not had a bad bout of it since that time, this is probably the worst I've had. 
And if you've never had vertigo, I'll try to explain. Um, you feel really, really dizzy. You can feel nauseous too from being so dizzy. So the best way I explained it to people is if you've ever been drunk, not everybody has, and you lay down and you feel like you're spinning, it's not that. It's if you were to lay down or just standing or anything and it feels like everything else is moving around you. You're not spinning. Everything else is. And because of that, I'll go to take a step and I, I don't know where the floor is. If you've got vertigo or if it had vertigo, I don't think everybody's experience with vertigo is exactly the same and some is way more extreme and some is much more mild and I've been very thankful that I feel like I'm on the milder side of having it. Um, it is a terrible feeling. You just don't know which way is up, really. It's, it's, yeah. Like, I feel like, John saw me yesterday and he was like, what are you doing? Cause I'm like holding my arms out like this and I'm trying to figure out how the ground is level and where I should step. And he was just like, this is, this is bad. This is the worst I've seen you ever have something like this. And I was like, yeah, it doesn't feel, I'm not, I'm not feeling very good. So I hope that it clears up in a day or so. And if not, I'll have to call the doctor because I don't have medication for it because I've not had, it's never been like where I need it on a daily. I hope I don't need it on a daily ever because the, it's a terrible feeling. I know there's worse things out there, but vertigo definitely is like, pff, makes you kind of sick feeling. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now I'm 12 minutes in and I've told you all my personal health issues. Till the next clip. <laughs> Didn't think I'd be back today, which is the next day. And it's June 30th, Wednesday. I haven't clocked in for work yet. It is 8.35. Coffee. Good morning, y'all. Might not be morning. Wearing my new shirt, which I haven't worn. John got this for me. That was very loud. I'm sorry. Tom and Jerry. It's one of those shirts where you have to wear, like, I got a cami on under it. I don't normally wear stuff like that. But, okay. Inspiration hit hard. I talked in the video, in the last clip, about Andy and all the things she was making with her rollbacker. And I had to go play with my machine. I had mentioned how I was not getting anything done for myself that was all like Etsy shop stuff. Yeah. I had, I had to do it. I did it. I did it. <laughs> so I had this yarn from Macy, from Mace of Skeins. She's a Texas dyer. She had sent me her, she had done a bunch of colorways for her spring collection. So her yarn she does collections and it comes out for that season or whatever and that's it. I don't think she re-dyes colorways. I think it's it's all for that season and it's gone. Just kind of how the clothing industry is, right? Like stuff comes out, when it's gone, it's gone. I think there's other dyers that do that too. I could be wrong, but so this is her spring collection. You may be able to find it on D stashes or things like that. This was her sock sets for Lily of the Valley and Cherry Blossoms. I had cranked her a pair for sample and she let me keep a pair. So I had yarn left over from that because you don't use, you know, a full hundred grams like ever. Even, especially when you're using contrasting colors. So these are not twins. They're kissing cousins. <laughs> but I wanted to try the roll top edge that's in that book that I mentioned about selvages. I had seen it in there. I just haven't done it. I went straight for doing just how you do a good e-wrap cast on for a ribbed edge. 
but I think there's time and place for all these different types of edges, like pico edges and this roll top. Um, it's reminiscent kind of the Rose City Rollers, I guess, but done on your machine. So you know when you're doing uh, stockinette it curls, and if you're doing a tube in stockinette or, or you know, a hat, they have like the rolled brimmed hats. It curls up if you don't do some sort of ribbing on the edge. That's what the socks do. <laughs> These are so much fun. So I kind of did a little mixy matchy and this green came with the Lily of the Valley set. And of course this purpley color came with the cherry blossom set. I did use it for the toes, but I thought it would be really fun to do some shorties with the roll top. They are so cool. They, they don't look as good on the blocks. Here, let me put it on a foot and I'll do some weird podcaster yoga, I guess. I don't know what to <laughs> So they're not real long. I want them to be shorties. I know, that's awkward, right? Awkward! But I was so inspired, I, of course, messaged Andy as soon as I finished. I didn't even fully finish, I had to close the toe. And I messaged Andy and I was like, my dear friend, you inspire me. And I sent her a picture. And then of course we had a talk. And of course I listened to the dirty heads while I cranked the socks because Andy and I had bonded <laughs> about some music and dirty heads was one of the ones we talked about the most and I love them so much so there you go I think they're a lot of fun you should check out um Macy her podcasts are really great and um she's got a lot of energy and I appreciate that because sometimes you need that energy, the energy coming through to you. Um, but yeah, so I was inspired and I had to do it. And I had to do it like right then and there. And it was John's bedtime, so I was able to. All right, there we go. New socks for me. I've never done like shorties like this. So this is really exciting. Oh, I gotta clip that. That's where I did my, you probably can't see it. You can do a Russian join on your machine. And I do that before the toes because I change the color um, like two rows before I do the toe and I do a Russian join. That way I don't have to weave in any ends. But it kind of popped through. I got to pull it back and then snip it. I like doing the Russian join when you're doing a lot of colors. But these were so easy. That book is so wonderful. I'll make sure I do link um, Kathy Rowletter's Ravelry page because that's how you have to to purchase it or I think you might the directions might be on another site too but I'll definitely link that I'm sorry it's Ravelry and some people still have issues but that's where it is I could probably link her email and her directions too honestly because that's how you do it you PayPal her and you send her an email and she sends you the book so yay done it is Friday, July 2nd. <laughs> I have to think about it every time. I'm like, I sit down, I'm like, okay, it's Friday, July 2nd. And then I turn the camera on and every time I stumble. It's inevitable. I have to pause. You've probably have seen it quite a few times. Hey everyone, I'm editing this right now and I realized that I never told you that I did end up going to an express care and they diagnosed me with acute rhinitis and acute dizziness. So I have some sort of inflammation going on with congestion and so they feel like that is causing, um, the inflammation is pressing somewhere and causing the dizziness. So I am now on Flonase nasal spray and um, Mucinex, which I need to take that. Um, just taking one a day. And they gave me meclizine, 
I believe is what it is for the dizziness, but it causes drowsiness and I've chosen not to take that only because I have to pick up haze from school and I have to, I had to work still. I could probably take it this weekend, but I'm feeling pretty good. It's really the worst when I lay down to go to bed right now. So it's probably just the change in whatever. God, I'm a hot mess. So yeah, that uh, I didn't update you. So I'm sorry. Now back to the video. <sighs> Inspiration struck again. And I knew I had wanted to try more things on my sock machine than just socks and tubes. There are a bunch of patterns on the CSM supplies. They're all free. Um, and I had seen Jamie Mayfield on Sock TV uh, make other things. And I'm like, I really want to try. She's made cat toys. She's made other things. Today she made a chemo cap. And you have to um, use your river. Oh my god. A uh, half pitch. Which means... Say these are all your cylinder needles, and I know they're not equally spaced. And then the river needles go between. You're half pitching it so it's kind of not in between anymore, but kind of right, not on top either. It's hard to explain. So if you have, I have a 64, but I'm gonna use 60 for ease. If you have 60 cylinder stitches, and you have a 60 doll river, and you half pitch it, you can use all 120 needles, which I've never done because my my river is perfectly timed for just doing my one by one and not half pitching it. You have to adjust it a little to half pitch it. And I just haven't done that. I want to because I want to make some hats on it. So. Needless to say, I went on CSM Supplies and I downloaded the pattern called Jenny's Ornament. Now, if you've watched my episodes in the past, if you're a long time viewer, you've seen that I do a lot of hand knitting of Christmas ornaments, beaded Christmas ornaments, and I wanted to attempt it on the machine. This is called Jenny's Ornament and it's by Myra Ness, K-N-E-S-S, -S, Designs. I'm looking at a paper because I can never remember. I used Mesa Skeins yarn again because it was already on the cone, already on my table. It's not perfect by any means. I did one, two, less of a row down here. You can see they're closer together. So you can see there's still a little bit of ease in there. It's got some positive ease. This is a, just so everyone knows, it is an 80 millimeter Christmas ornament. That didn't focus. It's 80 millimeter. I use a smaller ornament for my hand knit ornaments and I had these by chance because I had bought them by accident and it worked out. I also watched a YouTube video about how to put the beads on your machine, which I will link that down below because it's a magical. And even if you don't have a machine, it's like bead witchery. <laughs> so I used my fishing line. She uses something she called I can't remember what she called it in the video, but I just used my fishing line to put the beads on. Pretty awesome. I would make some adjustments to this now that I've done it. It calls for like five rows at the bottom and five rows at the top. I would do less or maybe, I think this might be the bottom. And that's, nope, because I beaded them too close at the beginning. It's not wrong by any chance and it's gonna go on my tree because it's the first one I make. 
I would possibly also, now this was yarn from um, Macy, I said, Macy Skeins. This is not the typical. The yarn I have that's the Knit Picks Stroll that John dyes, my machine is set up really well for that and I get a really good gauge. Now I could adjust my tension. I probably wouldn't do that though. What I would probably do is put my heel spring on to make my tension tighter and tighten this up just a little bit. It's got a little bit of play, not a lot. And it fits pretty well and if I do that, I'm if I adjusted that, I might not want to do less rows on the top and bottom. Just saying. Christmas, y'all, in July. But I would like to see how well if people would want to purchase these. I've looked at packaging for Christmas ornaments because I would gonna sell my hand knit ones and I would need a box and I would need a certain size box for a certain for I measured for the other size ball but would that be something anybody would even be interested in or people are like I can hand I can make my own I like this little design that's really cool I love the beads though and the ones I make for Christmas that are hand beaded the beads spiral around so I might even attempt playing with different beading designs maybe I'd have to see the bead would even be pretty on that on that so there's so much you can do my brain's just kind of spinning with ideas so yeah I know people have been commenting a lot on the last video. I'm so excited for that. That is very, very exciting. So keep those comments coming because we're not going to draw till next Saturday or Friday into Saturday, however that works. And yeah, stay tuned for after this because I'll probably do a little bit of a roundup, but I'll do a camper tour because we're actually going to be in the camper tomorrow. So stay tuned for that if you're interested and that'll be all the way at the end of the video. It might be a hot mess in the camper and I might even say that tomorrow when I start recording. But you know, we're living in it and it's a much smaller space that you're living in than your house. You make it work. You know, you see, I'm on groups for campers and pop-up campers and they make them so visually beautiful and you're like, yeah, right. <laughs> Don't look like that after like the first two hours. Come on, people. It's, it's all a show that they're like, oh, my pretty everything. And then, you know, you're out tromping in the woods and muddy and then <laughs> like, where do those people keep their clothes and stuff? There is no way they keep it. It's all for show. It's just all for show. I have to like get over that. Like, it's just like with regular like social media stuff, like, and people have these beautiful uh, feeds. I just, I, I, mine's just not that. It's just not that. And you can't hold yourself up to certain, st you can't hold yourself to other people's standards. You gotta do you. So, Christmas ornaments. <laughs> all right, I need to stop rambling. There you go, though. I had to try something new. I am all about attempting new things and learning. And yeah, now that I know I can do this, again, the, the gears are spinning. So stay tuned. Coming to you on location from the new camper. Oh, God, and John's already falling. I'm not falling. <laughs> How am I falling? I moved the broom because it was in the way. She didn't like the bloom. <laughs> The, the bloom <laughs> being right there, so she put it right where I could trip and fall. Aesthetic. I was trying to make it look nice, even though we have. Yeah. <laughs> You're trying to make it look nice. Yeah. I I know I don't look <laughs> nice at all. I look like a hot mess <laughs> because I technically need a shower. 
because I shower every morning to make myself feel human. But I'm a right. roughneck, so I have to shower at night to get all the work, the dirt of the day off of me. Yeah. Well, let me show this, and then we'll do this, and then we'll do a camper tour. Well, hold on. Uh, okay. It's 9.22 in the a.m., and this is shot number three. <laughs> Camping! Oopsie And daisy. you're on, like, beer two. No, beer one. Oh, There's, I haven't had any. The can yet. that you saw sitting next to beer one is from last night. Oh. All right. Well, you're Still gonna, not good for now. You want to tell them at least what it is? No, I don't want to tell them what it is. I don't want my Irish ancestors to roll over in their graves. Um, it's so good, though. It's so and good. it's kind of... Dude, if we had chocolate... Dude, liquor, some sort, totally of, miss you. some sort of chocolate liquor mixed with this, it would totally go with the fact that we're in Hershey and it's peanut butter whiskey. It's peanut butter whiskey. Don't tell my dead Irish ancestors, please. <laughs> please. This looks really grainy, doesn't it? It doesn't look very good. Did you clean your camera? I did. Have you ever done that before? Yeah. Like, you know all the... The grease and oil from your okay. face, like, is usually right here. Cool story, and then, bro. like, when you video. Pitter patter, let's get at her. <laughs> to be fair. To be fair. <laughs> That's so good. Woo! If you've never tried screwball peanut butter whiskey, peanut butter whiskey, it sounds gross. It's funny because it, it has a sheep on it. Horrible. You should get the bottle because it has a sheep on it. I mean, how weird is that? A whiskey that's peanut butter and it has... Oh, you shook everything. It has a sheep. Why do No, it because it says to the misfits, black sheep, and screwballs. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. So this, it's only 70 proof, so you can have like 13 of them. And uh, and no. still be no. fine to drive a golf cart. No. <clears throat> so. Uh, oh, well, yeah. All right, these got to get cleaned again. Let me finish up. We're gonna round up the video for the knitting and then do the camper tour. But look, it's detached, y'all. Do you know what that means? That means that one of Teresa's testicles has descended. <laughs> Okay, this is Pretty Twisted Yarn, and the dyer is Teresa. Sorry, Teresa. <laughs> Actually, not well, sorry. No, she, she loves it. She talks about her balls all the time. She so. loves it. I have She now said taken we make it, her laugh a lot. I've now funny. taken it to uh, a whole new level. From balls to testicles. So oh, great. One has descended. All right, ready? Yep. Do, 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 do. Oh, boy. <laughs> Shout out to Earl Becker. Cranking machine. No! Can knit this. No, you did not. Yes, I did. Don't try to lie. They to know people. I did because they've seen it in progress. Have they seen you knitting it? No. No, but exactly. you can't do this on the machine. Well, I mean, maybe you could, but you, it, this not. So I was here, and now I've finished the toe, <laughs> and I had. I was like, okay. oh, I don't want to go into the new color. So I was like praying it didn't go to the new color. Stop it. Just the tip, just for a minute, oh, just to God. see how it feels. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is all I, I'm going to start the next sock. We have, so this campground's pretty big. Big. I miss state parks. Yeah. But like, we'll, we'll be able to get back again. We are, we are in Hershey. Like, yeah, the kind of campground that the pool we opens avoid. at eleven. We usually try to avoid this type of campground. Hi, <laughs> that's our wildling. <laughs> she looks like a wildling. Her hair, like with the whole Stop toothless vibe it. and the and the, she looks like she looks like somebody that's trying to scalp tickets outside of a Dirty Heads concert. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. You gonna do the tour of the camper haze and show everybody Smoke everything? Weed every day. No, but I only want to tell you if there's a bunk bed. Okay, well you can show them the bunk bed when we do the tour. All right, so ah! stop. All right, so the pool opens at eleven. There's all kinds of activities. They bring animals over from the zoo. There's crafts. We're doing all the things at the campground, and their camp store is amazing. 
I just have to say that. It's amazing. It's a good camp store. So we've still got an hour and 34 minutes until the pool opens. So that, on average, would be five shots of screwball. No, we need food. Three beers. Food. We're going to show up at food. the pool like, yeet! We have to make sure our kid is not going to drown in the pool. Yeah, we have to we be. We brought her floaties. We have to be <laughs> responsible parents. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. All right. Yeah, you're right. I think I'm going to go into Little Pool since there's a baby pool. So there is a little baby pool. You can go in it. That's fine. All right. Let's do a tour. All right, so here's the outside, which I had a little clip of that already. And John, you're gonna invite us in? Hi. Welcome. Come on in. <laughs> All right, so when you walk in to the right, stop. Okay, John. What? Do he, I get to twerk? No, okay. You promised I'd be able to twerk. Okay, so when you walk in to the right, there's a cubby on each side of the Murphy bed that has storage. I bought those nifty things. They're pretty awesome. Hey. Hazel is on the couch that turns into like a lay down bed, which also has recliners. So that's cool. And then this comes out and this is a Murphy bed. Yeah. So that's where we sleep. So all our bedding is up tucked in there. And then Hazel, run to your bedroom. Okay, but we're not there yet, but No, don't take the Murphy bed down. I want to give the viewers the Don't take experience. the Murphy bed down. This okay, this video is turning to crap. What do we need to show that for? Because there's a window. And you're You're in your shoes which we talked about. So, there's a bed. Now you get to see a bed. Oh. But and there, there's a window. That was what we woke up to this morning. Yeah. Yay. All right. You got to pull the knob. I got to teach him everything. Hey. All right. I'll just go this way. This cabinet is storage. Those cabinets are all storage. This is the slide out. So this slides out and actually comes all the way up to where the kitchen is. But that table also folds down into a bed and there's storage under there and there's storage in the drawers. There, John's showing you the recliner. Recliner. All right, so to the right of the door when you walk in are some drawers. There's all of our audio type stuff and electrical. And then there's a kitchen. So you have a sink, you have this nifty pop-out electrical unit three bottles, of alcohol. three bottles of alcohol there is a tv that swivels so i'm going to walk over towards the dinette this pops up for extra space you never know where we'll pop up wow yeah. cool and then you have a stove an oven and the microwave Awesome. Some bananas from 1862. Oh my god. A refrigerator, a full size refrigerator, which is ridiculous. I'm right next to it. Hazel's right I next to it. Right There's a pantry here. That's where we keep all of our. Food. And then that's an access panel. This is the coolest part, I think. So this is the bunk beds. Hazel is in the bottom one. And they all have USBs and lights. Turn your light on, Hazel. And then this is the I top don't one. Know lights, but there is buttons on the light. There you go. Woo! So where Hazel's laying though, you can see this is storage. And half of the bunk bed lifts up. And you can store bikes or tables or whatever. And then this door is where all the magic happens. No. Bathroom. You have your RV toilet. We have a tub and the shower. And then cabinet, sink. This is going to be the shakiest video and a little bit of storage. And there you go. Good job, John. Break it. 
No, you don't. And then, so there you go. Our little dinette. And then the view from this end, if you... Did then. you show them the outside cookery? No, I guess I should. John, you want to show them your outside cookery? Okay. Of course, John wants to show this. Go ahead, babe. Ta-da! And what is it? A refrigerator. He's still figuring out things work. Oh my, and breaking things. Yikes. We have this extra table only because the griddle is too high on that to cook on. So we're gonna put the griddle on that. But this is an outside camp stove, so you don't have to cook inside. And then on that shelf is an actual griddle, like I was just saying, that we can put on this table. So John was very excited to have the outside refrigerator. See, I don't like it up there, but it is what it is. What are you doing? Oh, hooking it up. You have to show them the hose. You're such a weirdo. Wow, there's a hose, babe. Don't squirt me. Jerk. All right. Hot or cold water. There's an outdoor shower on the other side. Yeah. And I can take my TV from inside and disconnect it and then lift it up and I can hang it right here and watch baseball or something from outside. And those are my speakers for music or TV. Yeah. We got lights, we got an awning. All right. We got everything we'll ever need. Pretty much. We'll have this for a long, 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 long time. Long time. Yeah. All right, so everybody that wanted to see it, there you go. That is our camper. All right, y'all. Knit happy. Bye.